Do you want to learn more about the gospel this festive season? Well then carry on watching. Hello and welcome to day 10 of Bible study to Christmas. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mache and I make a variety of videos ranging from my daily life as a technical theatre student to some faith-based content as of recently. If you've stayed tuned for this series, I'm so sorry that I have to go through this babble every time. Just skip a little bit ahead. So this week we are dealing with the theme of Christ is here. And if you haven't seen the previous sections videos, make sure to go check those out. They will either be linked above or below. Um, you don't have to watch them right now, but they are quite informative and it does help to understand the whole story better. And as always, comment down any questions, observations, or even critiques that you may want to add. Just make sure to be kind and respectful to everyone in the comments because this is a learning experience for us all. So, without any further babbling, grab your Bible and let's go. So today we will be reading Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 18. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped, worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by other route, for God had warned them in a dream to not return to Herod. So as we previously discussed, Matthew goes less in depth of the actual details of Jesus' birth, unlike Luke chapter 2 but it instead focuses more on what happened after the birth of Jesus. So let's dig a little deeper. In verses 1 to 2, we find out that Jesus was born in the time of King Herod. Now, as a king, he was very good at his job. He was loyal, good in administration and politics in general. However, he was a very violent ruler and was very protective over his kingship. So guided by the star, the three wise men came to Jerusalem to find answers. Naturally, they would first go to the leader who supposedly would know more and would be more interested in what they had to say. They came to honor this king of the Jews and find out that this was not reciprocated by the leaders of Jerusalem. When Herod hears this news from the three wise men, in verse 3, he felt that his rule was threatened. And in verse 7 to 8, he tries to manipulate and deceive the three wise men so that he can kill this child. He says to them that when they find this child, they must come back and tell him where he is so he can worship them as well. Now, this whole situation is just very ironic to me, how he says he wants to worship him, but he's gonna want to kill him. And I think it's pretty sad how a grown man felt so threatened by an infant, but it does truly reflect his inner workings and his true colors. So then the wise men leave and in verse 9 to 12, 
they find Jesus and shower him with gifts. So these gifts were gold, which represents royalty, frankincense, which represents divinity, and myrrh, representing death. Hold up a second. Death? That does seem a little foretelling, don't you think? Well, I don't think the wise men particularly gave him myrrh on purpose because it represented death. I think they just wanted to honor their king, but it is some food for thought of just all the foretelling and foreshadowing that is going on. And in all this, more importantly than the gifts, the men bowed down and worshipped Jesus. So the men were warned by God in a dream that they should not go back to King Herod, and they listened and took another route home. So in the next section from verse 13 to 18, Joseph is also warned in a dream to take Jesus and Mary and flee to Egypt because Herod had an evil plan to kill the child. Despite God trying to just add a little bit of humanity into his deity form, in the most non-threatening way possible, a literal child, a certain part of humanity was still so threatened that they were willing to murder. So anyways... <laughs> Joseph, as he is, always obedient, fled to Egypt for an unspecified amount of time. In the meantime, in verses 16 to 18, Herod was really mad and really salty that he was deceived by the wise men. He decided, let's take matters into my own hands. Why don't we? So in his temper tantrum state, he ordered that all male children under the age of two would be killed. Way to go, Herod. Way to go. Well then. Well then. This is just so sickening to me that someone in power could even think of doing such terrible things like this. Like, sir, please, stop. So this passage may not be the most happy and festive story for Christmas, but I think it is an important part of the story and we can definitely learn some things from it. This scripture showcases the struggles and dangers that Jesus faced from birth. And despite being a mere child, a king who should be trusted in his powerful position was willing to kill his own population of young boys just to get rid of Jesus. And some people are still so threatened by the Holy Spirit, even without really realizing it, that it causes them to do or say terrible things. I'm sure you can think of a time when you may have had some sort of conversation about Jesus and it kind of just blew up in your face or it just turned real ugly real quick. And this may not be so brutal or drastic as King Herod's um, reaction, but it is important that we as followers of Jesus react accordingly to God's guidance. We may not understand the reason that certain people react and act the way that they do, but ultimately they are just fighting their own spiritual battles and their own insecurities. This passage also shows us three different kinds of responses to Jesus and we still see them on a daily basis. The first one is complete and open hatred and hostility towards Jesus, aka Herod. On the complete opposite spectrum of course is people that love and worship him at great cost, like the wise men. And then you get those fence sitters in between that just are in the lukewarm space. This extract also once again shows us how important it is to listen to God because he will protect us from harm. If the wise men were not obedient to God, they would have been gullible and literally given Jesus to Herod on a silver platter. And if Joseph wasn't obedient, his whole family would have been in danger. God knows the plans of people and he is out there to protect you. So when we have faith in him and we listen to him and react on what he asks us to do, we will ultimately find the right path. Thank you so much for sitting through this entire study with me. I'm glad you made it to the end and I really hope that you got something from it. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for this series so that you can know when I post a video every day at 5.30pm and that you can do your Bible study 
and as always feel free to leave any comments or questions down below and also comment your favorite point or verse from today's video i would absolutely love to hear your perspectives have a beautiful and blessed day and i will see you for day 11 of bible study to christmas bye